Hi everybody, it's Amy at Crafty Cat, and today we're going to work on the bee journal. Um, this cover for this bee journal is 100%. Thank you to Gail Augustinelli um, and Robin Dudley Howes, I believe is how you say her name. I didn't watch Robin's whole video, but um, I watched Gail's. And so I've done a few things differently, but it's this envelope thing that they're both doing with the envelopes on the top. I just thought it was super fun and would be great for this journal because I wanted it to be a little more like grungy and stuff like that. So I'll let you watch Gail's video on exactly how to do it. I'll just kind of show you what I already did because I'm not going to go through every step. But um, this is one of those tall envelopes, you know, the long coin envelopes. And so I have put it this way. I had to cut off the end so that it would be uh, the correct length because my file folder is here. So I've coffee dyed a file folder and uh, stitched it closed on either side and folded it in half. And that's literally it with that. And I know um, it seems like a waste to cover it because it's coffee dyed, but I still have the inside and the back and all that. And I will be putting some stuff on. I'm just not going to cover it entirely, though. So um, then what Robin Dudley Howes did and Gail is you kind of make a collection of envelopes to all fit together and open, you know, off of each other kind of thing. So this one opens this way and that I just glued that flower on there. So I want to make sure that stays. And then this is one of those first day cover envelopes and I'll be doing a little something to that, but I really just like that. I got that from Emma Femra. So if you're looking for first day cover envelopes, Emma Femra has them and I'll leave a link to her um, Etsy shop. And then this one is a regular, you know, like business size envelope that's been coffee dyed. The flap is back behind and I'll show you where the flaps are in just a minute. But we're going to cover this so that it'll just be a pocket that you open from the top or that, you know, you put things in and out from the top. And I just collaged all over this um, with just different things. And then this is a CD case and instead of having whatever come out of the top, it's attached to the, uh, the rest of the envelopes from the top and it would be hard to get things in and out. So I went ahead and cut the side off and we'll enter from the side. And then that one goes up. There's another avocado dyed envelope from Denise at Wonder Bar Crafts with the polka dots. That one will go this way. And then this is a plain coffee dyed, you know, large envelope. And you can use any size envelopes that you have. So don't think you can only use these size. You can configure them in um, all different ways. And you'll see Gail, if you go watch her video or have seen it, um, you know, she did it different than I did it. And Robin Dudley Howes did it different than Gail. It's just the idea is what we're using here. So you don't have to do it. Um, the exact way that we do it. Then this one opens like this. It's a little stiff because I just glued it a little stuck there. But we're going to be covering, you know, all that up. Then this is just a piece of my paper from Regal, my Regal Digi. And then what I have done that's different than Gail is I attached my envelopes to the back of that one sheet of paper. And I'll be putting down that sheet of paper and then probably attaching um, like a notepad or something is what I was thinking. I just wanted to do it this way instead of having the flaps of the envelopes on the back and on the inside cover because I don't want to cover these entirely. So I thought it would be better, you know, to have them just attached to this front piece that'll go, you know, right on here like this. And then it'll just be on the cover and it ties up with some baker's twine. Then when you open it, it's entirely, you know, separate. It's not, it doesn't come around the sides. So that's the only thing that I changed because I didn't want to cover my coffee stained um, folder all the way. So I think what we'll do is attach this to the front and I've done my best to, you know, kind of cut around and figure out where that's going to go. And it's not completely edge to edge. You know, you'll see maybe some of the coffee dye, but I'm fine with that. I, don't, I think that that looks fine. The first thing I want to do maybe is tie this um, piece of baker's twine so that it, um, you know, will tie the right way on here before I attach it down and then I can't move it once it's attached. So I'm just going to tie this right here and then we will glue the, the rest of the piece down 
see it's kind of uneven so I want I want it to be as even as possible I'm tying it over to the side because I have that flower there and um, already I guess it's not totally ideal for the bakers trying to go across that flower but this seemed like the best spot because of the thumb hole in the coin envelope so that's just kind of why I did that so I think that'll work right there and I can tie it tighter once it's attached. It's just wanting to kind of lift up on me at the moment. So I'm going to use um, Eileen's Tacky Glue. That's my glue of choice for doing things like this. I find that it works the best for me. But uh, use the glue that you prefer, obviously. If there's one that you like better. And I want to make sure I get glue on that twine. I mean, I doubt it would move once it's all glued down anyway, but, and I want to make sure I really get all the way out to the edge because um, I don't want there to be like a weird lift or gap or something where it uh, attaches to the file folder. So I hope you guys are all having a wonderful day. This is my second video today. And if you did not watch the BB Craft video, we will be doing red, white, and blue for the color challenge on Monday. I just, I know I just did white and blue, but it's just, we're getting close to Independence Day, so I thought that would be fun. That was my sister's suggestion, which is a great suggestion. And probably the Monday after that, um, which is the 29th, that's the day my daughter graduates, so I probably won't be doing a video that day and I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep going with the color challenge um, after the red white and blue one that might be my last one I mean I, I have people playing along but I think you know people might be getting kind of tired of it so I decided I would you know end it at some point here all right so I just really want to match it up as best I can here with edges and all and luckily with the Aileen's Tacky Glue you do have a minute to kind of move stuff if you need to because it doesn't grab super duper fast which is helpful for me because <laughs> it's always interesting And I think I'm going to go ahead and open it now because I want to make sure that paper on the inside is laying down as flat as we can get it. Okay, I need a bone folder. What do I do with it? I'm just going to try to move that out to the edges there. And if it hangs off anywhere, I can just trim. Because as we all know, it's hard to get it perfectly, perfectly straight. Just want it stuck down really well. So does it seem pretty even? Let's see, it wants to lift over here. So I'm probably gonna have to put some uh, clamps on there hold that I just want to make sure that sticks nice tight it's sticking really well on this other side it's just this side that doesn't really want to which is understandable because it's like two folds meeting up so bless you and put a few on this side just to make sure because there is a little bit of a gap there. And we want our string to stay in there.
Okay, I think that bottom corner is okay. Kind of tricky with the dimension there on top. Might have been a good idea to wait on that. Yeah, these are really fun. Thank you, Gail, for sharing that. I do watch Robin um, Dudley Howell every so often, but sometimes I, I just don't get a chance to watch everything. <laughs> I thought this was a perfect cover for a bee journal. Can't get a hold of that little bitty piece right there, of course. dry a little bit. So I have the pages for my journal and I kind of just stuck some things in here and there. That's one of those pockets that we um, did together that Robin sent me, a different Robin, sent me um, the die cut for it. And so I just made some journaling cards and somebody was asking me um, what I do with the folded book pages when I'm gluing and like I fold them in half and put them aside. Well, I do things like this. So in between the pattern paper here and this paper, there's a book page in there just to give it some extra, you know, heft and strength so that when you write on it, it's not just a flimsy, floppy thing. And so um, this is Allie the Cockney Crafters uh, Be In Your Bonnet Digi there, so. And then this was just a bird image I had and then I did one another one with Allie's B and then this is uh, Artie Mays a little bit of my regal and a little typing book page there so see that made that and then I also made this uh, background for the pocket out of book page as well so um, that's why the book pages are good to save because they make good you know backgrounds or foundations or you know, pockets, tags, all that type of thing. So that's what I do with my book pages that I glue on. So I'll set that aside. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I need. I think I'm going to go ahead and um, stitch this in. This isn't going to get stitched in. It's going to go on a page. Um, because somebody was asking also to see how my uh, book cradle that my husband made works. So there's just all different, this is just scrap of paper that I've coffee dyed. There's one of those uh, bags that I got at a restaurant. And, you know, just all different papers, different sizes. So I just want to make sure that they're where I want them to be. Before I sew them in. And I'm going to try to move this one back to the middle more. I try to do with the pages. Let's get them all where I want them. I'm going to center that one. Oh, that one. Oh. <laughs> and then that's the middle of the signature. So I'm just going to get these all you know, pretty straight here. And I'm not uh, going to do lace on the pages because I haven't decide, decided yet how, where, how I want to do the journal. I may glue on some ruffles and things like that. But I wanted to show you guys how I stitched it. So I have my um, book cradle here. And I kind of just set it in there. And there's, a, there's like a ditch in that book cradle. So when you set that in there, it 
naturally goes right in to it. And we can even do the cover the same way. I just want it to be dry. I think I'll wait on the cover. I'll just do this part so you guys can see how this works and the reason for it. So I like to clamp. I kind of push down on it to make sure that, you know, they're all kind of going down in the middle. And I try to make sure these are even, so I'm, I just push on both sides here. To You can feel if the pages are uneven, and they're even. So and I'm just going to push down and clap that one. And for a one signature, it's fairly easy because you can just kind of eyeball it um, where the middle is. If I was doing multiple signatures, I would need to measure um, to find the middle, which I'll go ahead and do just so you guys can see kind of how to do that. Just use a pencil and try not to get my head in the way. So this is eight and a half. So four and a quarter. And I just go in to find the middle and I mark it with my pencil. And as long as you can see it, that's all that matters. And then I come one inch down from the top, so that would be seven and a half here. And then one inch up from the bottom, so it'll just be one because it's, you know, no halves or anything there. And then you can see where I've put my marks. And I just put it right back in here. And I'm going to poke my holes. And what I'll probably do is just leave this clamp together for now. And then um, when I'm ready to do the cover, when it's dry and stuff, I can just poke the holes in that too. So I'm just going right to that center spot. I want it to be as middle as possible. So it needs to set down in that ditch a little bit and go straight down. Make sure it's good. Come to the next hole near the top. Or the bottom, it, that, that order doesn't matter. But and if you hold your all straight down, and this the purpose of the book cradle is so that you don't get um, them crooked. You know that they end up right on the spine because if you've ever tried to make a journal without a book cradle, a lot of times you poke out like more on a side either this side or this side over here and so that's why the book cradle is so nice because see now I have my holes right directly on my spine they're not off to the side so that's the purpose of the book cradle and so if you had we're doing three journals you would um, or not three journals but three signatures you would make something like this which is shows the top this was the top of the journal I was making I folded it in half to get the half point and then um, measured up an inch and down an inch and found the middle and that's your first one then you can fold or you can just you know mark where the middle would be from the middle to this end and then the middle to this end kind of thing I just fold mine that's how I kind of figure out where I want it. So now I have one signature, two signatures, three signatures, and then I can, you know, put this in here and make the spots like hold it to the top, hold it to the bottom, put my pencil in, make the marks, and then cut them the same way or poke the holes the same way. That way you're getting your nice even spacing. So that's how you would do that. But the purpose of the cradle is to get those nice holes right on the spine. And then when you're done, you can just erase those marks. It's That's not hard at all. So that is what the cradle is for. And let's do, let's see what else we got to do today. I needed to make, uh, this is really, I think I'm going to add some things here this down enough yeah that's the envelope so I think this side's okay that one looks pretty good too 
All right. Okay, so I wanted to add um, just a little something to this, and I have one of these vellum stickers, and the nice part about these is you can still see through them, so I'll, I'm covering this stuff, but you'll still be able to see it. So I'm going to go ahead and put one of those on, and I got those from In Love Art Shop. I'll try to remember to link it below. It's hard to remember all the all the things. But they definitely are, um, they're not vellum stickers, but they're washi. They feel just like washi tape. I think they stick a little bit better though. And this was um, from my Digi, the tickets, and I just backed it with book page just to make it a little thicker, and that goes in that same pocket there. Um, I drew some bees, and that's what, where is it, this bee is, right here. Um, it's, I used my Arteza watercolors and then the fine line pins to do that. So I just shrunk some down too, so I have some littler ones, so I was thinking one of these guys would be kind of cute, because it'll cover up a little bit, but it's not going to cover up too much, so I think that'll work. And my son and I are working on turning those into a digi, in case you guys want just bees because they're kind of hard to find. <laughs> I mean, it was rough making a digi with bees. Put him right up here. And we need to cover some of these other pockets. I'll go ahead and do that. watercolor stuff everywhere. Alright, this blue flower would be kind of cool. Put the bee on it. And then you could still write a little bit on there, it looks like. So let me tear off the... Put the pin in my glue first before I totally mess that up. And it dries out. Okay. This is going to be tricky because my that flower is dimensional. And that um, doily, the green doily that's on there, was gifted to me by Allie. Thank you so much, Allie. I love that nice green. It's that <laughs> vintage -y green color back here. And then I just had this um, houndstooth flower there. So I thought that would look kind of cool. And So yeah, that was really nice of Allie to send me some of those doilies. She also, in her Digi, um, which one is it? The Faux Fabric Digital. She's got that doily al along with some other ones. So everybody can use them. Or you can, you know, you can use any doily if you want a real doily. Sorry, just trying to get a little bit straight. I'm just going to tear the top off a little bit. Decorate up these pockets. I love this envelope thing. I just think this is the coolest idea. <laughs> because it's a good way to use up junk mail envelopes. And it just looks really cool. It makes a great cover. 
Covers are sometimes hard for me to come up with. I don't know. As you remember from the last <laughs> journal I did, I struggled with that. It took me forever to figure out what I wanted to do. So the biggest thing is um, just to put a line of glue here so that you don't end up, you know, gluing that part of the pocket closed. Not that that would be a huge thing because you could just put a little bit shorter tag in there. But, you know, if you can help it, you don't really want to glue that all the way down. I forgot to get this. Glue page. I have one in there. Am I out of books to glue on? That's crazy. That's going to dry before I get this on here. Let's put a little bit more on again. Oh, I don't want to put it all the way to the end. Did I already? No. Let's do this instead. Because I always mess this up and I end up gluing my envelope closed and you guys have seen me do it so it's really tricky with that <laughs> back the way it is I'm just gonna I am gonna put some glue on this as well just to make sure the edges stay down I can just punch out that little spot again where the thumb hole is. So that's not a big deal. So my daughter got a job. I'm very excited for her. She starts today training. She's going to be a hostess. So that's super fun. It's a great first job. <laughs> I told her most kids end up doing like dishwasher or like, <laughs> I don't know, just not very fun first jobs. I had a pretty good first job. I worked in a thrift store because I, I grew up in a tourist area. It was really easy for us to get jobs though because they wanted, you know, high school students and stuff to work. I started working when I was 14 because, you know, there were places to work. Now it's almost impossible until they turn 18, they just won't hire them. Which I understand to an extent, but it's like, how are you supposed to build a good workforce if you never hire these kids? They don't know how to work until they're, you know, older. It's crazy. Alright, so there's that one. I like that a lot. It looks good with this. And then we need to back that part. And it would be good to find another piece that maybe you could write on. Find one at Allie's. Just got a whole pile of stuff here. This would be a good one, and that would fit about perfectly. Move that. And tear off the end first. I'll put a link in my description box for the Arteza um, items I used to make those bees. If you're interested in the watercolors and the fine line uh, pins. I've really enjoyed using their products. I mean, I wouldn't say that I didn't like them because they're they're just 
very good products. I'm happily very surprised. Okay, so when I tear off those two ends, that of course changes the size. So I think I'll put something down at the bottom, but we'll go ahead and put this up near the top more, and then we'll put like maybe a more colorful piece of paper down here. I had to draw a whole lot of bumblebees though before I came up with those four <laughs> that I finally ended up liking. They always looked really weird. <laughs> it's always tricky down that. You just gotta keep practicing playing with it because I don't there aren't many people that can just the very first time draw something and it looks perfect. Unless, you know, I mean there are people like that, but I think it's pretty rare. Okay, this is another one. I'm going to have to put the glue here because I don't want to glue this shut. But I do want to come all the way to the edge of it because I don't want there to be a weird uh, lip where the paper goes on. forgot I need to come all the way up to the top there and then I am going to put a line of glue just sort of where that corner is going to meet so that that corner stays closed and probably a line all the way down this would be right too I mean it would probably stay down just fine but want to make sure. Another interesting surface there. bubbles in here. Okay. And then we'll put something fun down there. Piece from Denise. And this is Denise at Wonder Bar Crafts. And this is from her um, Romantically Eclectic, the like fabric cards that she does. But I like to use these pages because they're just great backgrounds and, you know, designs. So I'm not organized enough to make all the fabric cards and wrap all my... <laughs> I should, but... <laughs> I don't, so I use this for other things. I would love to be one of those highly organized people. So just give us a nice little border down there and then you can write on this. I'll have to make uh, like journaling cards for all those pockets, all those envelopes. So it'll be I'm trying to figure out up and down here. There's some uh, script on it, so I think I got it. <laughs> it's always tricky. Okay like that 
And then you have the back of this envelope. This one's from my Digi. Um, Bee Journal. <laughs> I couldn't think of what it was called for a minute there. Drawing a total blank. I kind of want some of that doily, but probably not going to get a whole lot of it. Let's see. I'm make a bit of it. So let's see. We want to tear it at. that here and then we need to tear the other side. I want to keep it right there, right there. I'm going to turn that off. Let me do this bottom part first. Trying to be a little bit better about where I'm tearing. Sorry, I didn't think there would be tons of mowing. I don't even know what that is because they just did our common back area on Monday. outside really quick and see if they're spraying the common area with that weed stuff. They have in the past, they go along by our fences in the back and they spray like a, almost like a ditch of a weed killer that kills the grass back there so they don't have to um, weed eat right up to the fence. They're not? They're not? Okay. And they have just about killed my grapevines that I have growing along that our back fence before and so every year I have to ask them not to spray along there <laughs> and it doesn't make them happy but I we eat those grapes and I really don't want you know my kids getting sick because I don't know what is in that stuff so anyway This is just scrap of paper. It was a pad of paper I got at Joanne's and I've showed it a few times in the past. I'm gonna move this, making this way more difficult than it needs to be. I just want a thin strip to go kind of along there. And since I got it a little bit short, Want like a you know a little design over there. It's perfect. Brings out that nice blue. That always causes a big hoo ha when I go out there and ask him not to do that. I don't know why, but there's just a guy that works for them. He's just not nice. Like he gets all mad at me. <laughs> it's like, well, I just don't want. I don't want to eat that stuff. <laughs> Sorry. My husband weed, weed eats back there, so. It's all grass. It's not like, you know, weeds. It's just they make a small area where they don't have to weed eat next to the fence is what they're trying to avoid. This one is all closed up, this envelope, because they come sealed, but um, when you do open them, there's a card inside, which is kind of cool because it's a little bit yellowed, and I'll use it as the journaling card for this. There's bees all over in those morning glories. I like that image. 
Okay, so um, that I'll have to snip right there. But in here is a little, I mean, it's kind of like manila file folder is what it feels like. But it's yellowed and stuff, so it's kind of cool. So I'll just use that as the journaling card for this pocket since it was already part of it. What did I do with my punch for that? It's probably sitting right here. You guys are probably like, it's right there. I don't see it. Oh my goodness. There it is. It's buried. It was buried. You didn't see it. <laughs> I had to punch all these holes, you know, the thumb holes prior because I was trying to figure out which direction I wanted everything. So that's why they're already all done. I should probably do it more. It works pretty good. Okay. Posh is yelling at one of the kids. Probably holding him. He does not like to be held. Just cranky little thing. So yeah, I'm really, I really like these. This is super fun. Very cool. I don't know what to do to this yet, so I might wait. Because I almost just want to leave it like it is and maybe, maybe just like a flower. Maybe one of those washi type ones might work just want like a flower or something I don't want to cover up the whole thing because whatever we put in there you know you want to see it could come down like that just trim off whatever hangs over sort of skinnier or something Oh, that might work. Yeah, I do like that one. There's a two-bit. I kind of like that better. This one's good too, but it's even bigger. It would take up even more space. If I hung it off the side though, would it work? Hmm. I think I just like this one. I think I'm just gonna put that there because you'll kind of be able to see through it so that'll be that'll be good I don't want to cover that all up because it's got that nice um, avocado dye and then I could just maybe put one B or something on there let's see let me do this first I need to ink around this I didn't do that with that other one just get rid of this white that these are on And this one, because it's going on this plastic, I think I am going to put a little glue on the back. Maybe, if I don't mess it all up. They're pretty sticky, but um, I just want to make sure that it's going to stay down. I don't want it picking up. I'm going to come off the edge and I'll trim it wherever it's hanging off. I love these from In Love Art Shop. Those are great. Little decorations. This is going to be tricky with all these envelopes hooked together. Thank you so much, Gail. I know. I mean, I know this wasn't your idea, but I'm so glad you shared it because, like I said, I just don't always get to watch stuff, you know. And I try to keep up with my design team because, you know, I want to see what they're doing. But, yeah, it gets tricky. You brought a cat. Yes. She's just going to follow you all day? I like this bee going this way. He's kind of fun. Maybe I'll put him right there. And I printed these on um, parchment. So they're cute. I'm going to use some of this to make sure it sticks to all that. And I think that's really all I'm going to do to that. I kind of just want to leave it with the pink. 
I might put one of Artie Mays's labels somewhere on it. Loving those labels. She's got a whole bunch of neat ones. Uh, scoot them up a little bit. I'm going to cover up the flower too much. It's a little leg to fall off. Okay. Just fat little bees. All right, what else do we want to put on there possibly? Let's see. There's some of these that are tiny, tiny. I got another set. I'll put links to these because um, there's two different sets here. Oh, I know what I was. I found one with a, a beehive on it. Maybe that's what I'll put on there. And then a little something else with it fabric or something. Got stuff everywhere here. Where did I put those little bits of fabric that I was using? Desk is a disaster again. Gets that way very fast. Clean it up after every a journal, but there's no hope. There's just no hope. I think I'm just going to kind of rough a little bit. I'm not going to be able to stitch it because it's, um, you know, a pocket. I'll just put some of this. Maybe if it'll come out. See it on there. <laughs> it was blending too well. I might try to do the tiny attacher. I mean, I'll probably glue it too, but I'm thinking I might be able to stick that in there and attach it like that. So let's get a little glue on there. to the edges here. And this is already maze, this stamp. Yep, that will go right in there. I'm doing one here. If I decide to put anything else on, you'll see it eventually. I think I'm just going to leave the back because then you can write on it or whatever, you know. So let's see, what do we got? We're at 48 minutes. I want to use this little girl. She's so cute. See what I have left in ephemera because I have some good ephemera from Ali too that I could use. Um, yeah, it's not gonna quite be big enough. I think I'm just gonna go with that one. Or the edge off first. Every time. I think I'm holding it good, but not. It's right in the middle where you need to. Yeah. You can add. 
we can put something else up there. It's not a big, big deal. Okay. I need to figure out how wide I need it, huh? I got discombobulated with the whole tearing the whole thing. <laughs> tear it up here and I'll figure out something else to put along the top. It's a little tricky with all the flaps and things I will say. had the one page left over from another project. Let's see. Pieces of the papers that I use. They might not be the exact ones. I think this one's in my dog days, but it will work. Same color way. cute. Let's go right across there. And there's still a little space to write. Not a ton, but it's a little space. Do the back of that one too and the pink one figure out but I'm just trying to see how this goes then this one this one this one that's not right how did I do I think I went that one that one that one that, that one yeah I mean you can do it however <laughs> any way that you wanted to so I think I'll stop there for today. I just uh, wanted to come on and kind of give you an idea of what I'm working on. So I think that's going to be lots of fun. And then um, maybe we can put in the signature real quick if I can find it. Yeah. 
So I'm going to use my um, book cradle again. Get my strings out of the way. I don't want the strings in there. And then basically I'm going to kind of just eyeball where I want it in the journal because I kind of want it even on both ends, if you know, if that makes sense. So that there also is this line up here for the file folder. But I'm not going to worry about that because otherwise I'm going to be way too low. So I'm just going to try to make it even at both ends. And then I'm going to use my same all again to go through the same holes that I already have in the journal itself. I'm straight down. And it'll stop, so don't worry about any of that. Straight down again. Hold on just a second because my daughter's leaving. Okay, I'm back. I just wanted to tell her to have a good day. It's the first one. And then we're going to go all the way through this one. Okay. Now I want to put that lid on my twine and we go one length of the journal, two lengths of the journal, three lengths of the journal. And I got the all and this, this is, um, I can't remember what they call it. Oh my goodness. It's like not embroidery. It's for, like, uh, upholstery. <laughs> upholstery thread, that's the word. So it's stronger than, you know, because you don't want something that's just going to break when you tie it, because you do got to kind of give it a yank. All right. So I think I'm going to have my ties on the inside. So if you want them on the inside, you need to start on the inside. If you want your extra, you know, thread to hang out on the outside, you need to start on the outside. So we're going to start on the inside. And the advantage of doing one signature is it's just a whole lot easier. So if you're going to do a journal the first time, probably be a good idea to do one signature. So I do this a little different than like Gail. I come out the middle, back in the top. And I think there's a, you know, there's a few different ways. And I'm just coming through here and then through here. Maybe. <laughs> and then I'm going all the way down to the bottom hole and out. And the bottom hole. And then I'm coming back in through the middle and back in through the middle of the journal pages. I know it's probably hard to see because I have covers and things and I always have to fight with everything when I do these. This is why I don't love doing it on camera. And I'm about to lose this, so make sure you don't lose your thread through the hole. Oh, what did I do? Okay, we're going to try that again. I don't know what I did. I didn't hold on to my thread well enough. I have to do that every once in a while, you know. Okay. So we're going to go in through here because I want my strings on the inside. See, so we all make mistakes doing this because it's just tricky because you're trying to go through different um, layers of things and it would probably be better if I went through the whole thing at once, but okay, I'm going all the way down to the bottom, holding onto my thread. So this one you need to make sure you don't pull it all the way out, which is what I did last time. And I'm coming back in here, back through here, through the middle. Just struggling to get this in here. 
It is tricky. I'm not going to pretend that it's not. Okay, so now I'm coming back the same hole that I started with, and I've got this all wound around here. Okay, so once you have it all in, you want one string on this side of your middle string, string there, and one on the other. So one of these on each side of that center string. And I'm going to take these off because we're done with these now. They drive me crazy because the threads get all caught up in it. Okay, and then I like to lift it and kind of shake it rather than doing a whole lot of tugging. And I kind of hold it up in the air to tie it. That just seems to work for me to get a nice tight um, middle string so you can hear it's almost like a guitar string. And then I keep holding it up. And I do this even with the three signature journals because to me that's what gives me that nice tight string there. And then you don't have a lot of, see I can't wiggle my pages, you don't want your pages moving around in the signature. And then I tie it three times total. And then you can snip those and leave them hanging to put charms on if you want to. I may put a few beads on there, I don't know yet, so I'm just going to leave them hang. Okay, and then this gets tied around here. And then we will also have some type of closure. I just am not sure what. I might go all the way around it or I don't know yet. Because this isn't going to hold the whole, you know, the whole thing together. But there's our little signature. And that's a super easy way to do a journal. So just a manila file folder, fold it in half, you know, stitch down the sides, and then one signature journal inside. So even if you didn't do all this on the top, you could uh, do a simple journal that way. All right, and you got, and you can see we all have issues with <laughs> sewing and signatures. It's just tricky. It's just, it just is. So I hope you have an awesome day, and we will chat again soon. Thank you. Bye bye now.